Do you recognize this apartment? Well, maybe not this specific apartment, but I'm sure you recognize this layout. It's basically the archetype of most modern day apartments, a one bedroom box with windows on one side. Apartments in North America follow a very typical and almost predictable blueprint. You have a long hallway dividing the building in half with units on each side. On the inside, that creates a bunch of mostly one bedroom or studio apartments with a single window. And on the outside, it results in a wide and boxy looking building. But this design isn't popular because architects enjoy designing the same building over and over again. It's primarily a consequence of the rules surrounding how we build apartments, which inadvertently favor this layout. So what designs could be possible if we reconsidered some of these rules? Well, people have some ideas. Earlier this year, Urbanarium hosted a design competition called Decoding Density. It invited designers to submit ideas for how we could reimagine apartments if we relaxed or even eliminated the rules they are currently subject to. Their focus was to look for ways to build apartments in single family neighborhoods, like how might an apartment fit into a property that typically holds a single house? Or how could we add more housing into a typical cul-de-sac? And the response was honestly incredible. There were 85 entries from across Canada and all over the world, as far away as Iran, Chile, Paris, Italy, Singapore, and South Korea. It was fascinating to have their perspective on how we could design apartments here in North America. And for this video, I'd like to highlight a few of the most thought-provoking ideas that I noticed and how that might impact our building regulations today. To start us off, there was one design feature that came up over and over again. A single staircase apartment where all residents enter and leave their homes using one staircase. Over a third of the submissions use this layout. Now, it might not sound like a big deal, but in North America, this goes against one key building code requirement. You see, every apartment above two or three stories in Canada and the US is required to give its residents access to two staircases, a rule that came about in the 1940s when apartment fires were common and sprinklers were not. Today, this rule is a big part of the reason why apartments are really hard to build in single family neighborhoods. Connecting every unit to two staircases requires much more space, which is why builders often take on the risky and expensive process of buying and amalgamating multiple houses so that they have enough land to build on. On top of that, connecting the units to two stairs using a hallway cuts the building in half, which makes it very hard for architects to create anything other than studios or one bedroom layouts. I made a whole video about this issue if you want to dive deeper into it. So what would be possible if we didn't require two staircases? Well, take a look at Deciplex, one of the most compact apartment designs in this competition. By connecting all of its units to a single staircase and elevator, the designers are able to fit up to 10 homes on just a 20 foot wide property. So on a property that would typically be used for a small house, you could build this. And this is actually possible. I recently visited Seattle, one of just a few cities in North America that allow single staircase buildings. And while I was there, I came across a similar single staircase building that also fits 10 homes onto a typical single family property. But the main benefit of a single staircase apartment isn't just that it allows for more compact apartments, it also makes it much easier to create family sized apartments. Take a look at Rise and Connect. Instead of having each unit lined up along a hallway, the designers wrap each unit around a single staircase, which makes it much easier to create units with more bedrooms. In Rise and Connect, the building includes up to three bedroom units, but I saw other designs with up to four bedrooms as well. I think this next entry demonstrates another key benefit. The design is two six-story apartments made up of one bedroom units, and by having each one wrap around a single staircase, the designer is able to turn them all into corner apartments with windows on two sides, which gives the rooms better ventilation and more sunlight. The next trend I noticed was about an often overlooked feature in apartments, circulation spaces. That's architecture talk for the spaces that allow people to move throughout a building, like hallways, staircases, elevators, and lobbies. In most apartments, these spaces are purely functional, just for getting in and out of your home. But many designers in this competition saw a lot more potential with these spaces. 
For example, many submissions envisioned courtyard-style apartments where walkways and stairs look over a common area. This is actually a pretty popular design for apartments in other parts of the world because they're seen as a way to foster a stronger sense of community among residents. The open walkways help you get to know your neighbors, while the courtyard can be used as a venue for gatherings and other events. I think a very thoughtful approach to this idea is shared density. The designer envisions two single-stair buildings overlooking a courtyard with access to a shared kitchen, workshop, and guest suite. The courtyard also connects to the street, where you find a small storefront for a business like a cafe. And the best part is that all of this fits onto a typical single-family property. Another example that caught my eye was Talus House, where a network of stairs and patios give people access to their homes from the street while also creating spaces for gathering. Other designs went pretty wild with this idea. For example, in Hierarchy, the circulation areas are truly the centerpiece of the development. The designers create two columns of modular housing units and connect them with a maze of circulation components that include balconies, spiral stairs, and walkways leading to a shared park on the ground floor. Kind of reminds me of Marble Run. So why don't apartments today have more interesting circulation spaces? Well, part of it comes down to just how expensive land is in places like Vancouver, but I think there's another key rule that plays a role here. In most cities, developments are subject to rules that set a maximum amount of floor space in a building, also known as FSR, FAR, FSI, and for architects, probably FML. And in many cities, that maximum floor space almost always includes hallways and other circulation spaces. Because of that, developers are incentivized to make hallways as small as possible because they prefer to use their valuable floor space for private units where they can make the most financial return. But if we didn't count hallways and other circulation spaces towards the maximum square footage of a building, I think we could see some much more interesting and creative uses for these spaces. The next trend I want to highlight isn't so much about the apartments themselves, but how they connect to each other, or could connect to each other. For example, collective radicals. Here, the designers lay out a basic plan for two apartments connected by a shared walkway, staircase, and elevator. But subsequent developments can attach their balcony to their neighbors to share those same circulation spaces. And in Tower House, the designers create eight-story apartments on what would typically be single-family properties and use the leftover space to create generous backyards that can be woven together to create shared amenities like playgrounds, gardens, and other communal areas. Several other entries included this idea as well. As you build more and more apartments in a neighborhood, you can connect them together through shared spaces. Now, you might be wondering, why would we want to do this? Is this just wishful thinking about some socialist utopia? Eh, but I also think that there's a very pragmatic reason for this as well. A lot of the entries focused on smaller sized apartments, but the reality is smaller sized apartments often lack the space for shared amenities such as gyms, playgrounds, and other communal areas that are frankly more feasible in a larger apartment. But by creating connections between their buildings, residents can pool their shared spaces together to create better amenities for everyone. You can take your kid to a neighboring apartment to hang out in their awesome playground and work out in another apartment's really nice gym, all while other neighbors can come to your apartment for a sweet co-working space. To make that possible, I think there's one key rule that we should modify. The setback rule. Most cities require buildings to be set back a certain distance from their property line to create space between buildings and clearly separate them. The result is that buildings are very limited in where they can be placed on a site, and the leftover spaces aren't very useful for anything other than maybe a few shrubs. So moving your apartment to the front to create a spacious backyard? Absolutely not. And creating a shared balcony with your neighbors? Right to jail, right away. No trial, no, no nothing. But what if we could modify these setback regulations to make better use of leftover spaces in our properties and encourage connections between buildings? So those were a few of the key themes that I noticed and wanted to highlight, but they certainly weren't the only ideas. Many entries also called for reducing or removing minimum parking requirements to make buildings more affordable and attract residents who don't need a car. Almost all designs called for mixed uses in their buildings, such as cafes, co-working spaces, and even a commercial spa. And finally, many entries also called for community land trusts to acquire and manage properties to create affordable housing for the overall community. If you're curious to dive deeper into some of these designs, you can check out all the submissions for the winning entries on decodingdensity.com. So at the end of the day, were these designs actually successful in creating better apartments? Well, 
I think that's a pretty subjective question, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on these designs if you'd like to leave them in the comments. Ultimately, I thought it was important to cover this competition because it kind of brings up this issue that we have to resolve as we address the housing crisis. Many cities today across North America are changing their zoning rules to allow for more housing in their single family neighborhoods. But on the ground, we're realizing that a host of other rules and building codes kind of get in the way of that happening in practice or end up producing the same apartment housing that we had before, which admittedly does have its shortcomings. Because of that, I think it's very worthwhile to have exercises where we create designs without thinking of these rules, to get above the weeds of regulation and try to understand the bigger picture of what we want out of the buildings and communities we create. And by discovering what regulations they brush up against, we can open up a very important conversation on what rules we should revisit and maybe even change today. To me, that's the first step in creating better apartments.